Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk about a question that keeps coming up and uh, gives my thoughts on it. And that is, what is meant by double weighted? It's something that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Taiji teachers use the term, and I'd like to uh, to clarify it a, a little bit because it's one of those things that has become um, uh, almost dogma in uh, in in the uh, in Taiji instruction, and it's a, a lot more nuanced than than I know that. I considered it, you know, for a long time, and the way I taught it for a long time. And uh, the uh, there's a, a general interpretation that uh, that we hear a lot, and that is basically that you don't want your weight to settle to be evenly distributed between your feet; that you wanted to have it more weighted in one foot or the other, one leg or the other. And that's sort of a, a general idea that gets uh, that is promoted. And one that I, I too have promoted it from time to time. And I don't think it's a necessarily a bad idea for uh, beginners to just have them aware that, oh yeah, don't don't park on, uh, on two feet. You know, you wanna keep it moving. But if you, I know in my Taiji Tran forms, uh, all of them, they, there are moments where you are encouraged to have a 50-50 split in your feet, you know, starting right from the, from the very beginning of, of, of most young style forms where you start and you're, you are starting in a, in a 50, 50 weight distribution. And then you move into cross hands position. Um, um, you know, there are different places along the way that where you're in that in that posture. And then you, and you can also say that every transition there will be a point where you're passing from passing through that 50-50 point. You don't linger there, but there there was a point where you're shifting. You know, you're going from one leg to the other. You're going to there's a at some point where the, it will be 50-50. So it you don't want to make it dogmatic. You don't want to make it like never ever ever get into you know that position where your weight is 50 50 because it it's actually a good thing to do so is there a, a, another way of understanding this this concept and double weighted is one way that 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 term is translated but it's not actually the the um the only way or maybe even the the best way so i wanted to read something to you from um uh, this is from uh the Taiji Chuan classic from um, oh, Wang Zhong Yu. I think it's Wang Zhong, is that it? Uh, hold on, let me see. Wang Zhong Yu, yes, Wang Zhong Yu. Um, anyway, the, uh, this is uh, Yang Jing Ming's interpretation of that. And it's, uh, he said, when there is double heaviness, mutual, he interprets as mutual resistance, then there is stagnation. Often after several years of dedicated training, one can still one still cannot apply this neutralization and is controlled by the opponent. The reason for this is the fault of double heaviness, is, is that the fault of double heaviness is not understood. And his comment on that is, so whether your partner attacks high or low, left or right, you do not resist them. Instead, you yield and follow, adhering to them patiently until you have good opportunity to attack. If you struggle against him, the liveliness of the interaction stagnates and the victory will go to the one with the most external strength. In Taiji, the attacking hand is considered heavy because it is putting weight or pressure on your partner. The Chinese character Zhong can be translated as weight and Trang as pair or double. Therefore, some authors translate Shuang Zhong as double weighting. However, the same character Zhong can also be pronounced Chong, translated as repeated overlapping. Therefore, Xuan Chong can be translated as double overlapping. This means mutual covering and resistance and has a sense of 
two forces struggling against each other, each striving for the upper hand. If you study for many years but never grasp the importance of avoiding this mutual resistance, then you'll never get the knack of neutralizing your partner's energy. Then it goes on to the translation, which is, to avoid this fault, you must know yin and yang. To adhere means to yield. To yield means to adhere. Yin not separate from yang, yang not separate from yin. Yin and yang mutually cooperate. Understanding this is understanding jin, dong jin. So uh, what he's talking about there is not so much as when you're doing your form, but whenever you're playing, say, push hands or you're sparring or whatever, and whenever you get into that thing where you're uh, like that and the forces are locked up, that is where you have that, that, uh, uh, that double uh, pressure or double entwining. So there's there, and the solution to that is to one yin, one yang, which in the context of the classic that this was written in the, I think the 1800s and uh, Wang Zhong Yu's classic. And uh, that's the source of, of most of the, uh, the teaching that has come out of that, the idea of double weighted. And so it's in a particular reference to a sparring or push hands or whatever, where there's, there is conflict and that you get locked up. And it's because you have forgotten how to, or you don't know how to properly follow your partner and lead into emptiness to be able to get more yin and more yang. So that's, that is the, the, the source of it to my understanding of uh, where that idea comes from, double weighted. And it's become more interpreted to like how you do your form, whether or not you are, you know, in your one leg or the other, waiting one leg or one leg, one leg or the other. Um, as I said, that you know, that I think it's not a bad thing to teach beginners because you want them to get the idea, and that they're not ready for the the subtlety of understanding substantial, insubstantial, yin and yang quite yet. They may understand, hear the words, but to actually feel it in your body, that takes, you know, a certain amount of practice. And so, you know, in, the, in that quote, he said, you know, after you've been doing this a while, you've been doing this for years, and you still don't get the idea, it's because you haven't understood this, this idea of locking up, you know, resisting uh, force rather than, than yielding and following that, that, that force. So having said that, I think there's still a benefit to be had in an awareness of this, of where your weight is, of course. And, but beyond that, you're going into the connection that we have, energetic connection we have. So we've been talking a lot lately about substantial and insubstantial, particularly as applies to the way we are moving, the way the, the legs are, you know, moving, uh, the way they, the the qua is is translating the energy you know and and coordinating that with the torso so the um learning how to to differentiate substantial and insubstantial is the senior datum here and that is so that is when you can grasp that and assigning left and right is not a bad idea too, because then you're you're flipping back and forth in your in the hemispheres of your brain. Anytime I'm I'm feeling into my right leg, I'm actually activating my the left side of my my brain. And when I'm going into my left leg, I'm I'm activating the right side of my my brain. And so getting those two coordinated creates a enhanced um integration of your your mental functions getting outside of just thinking about things to actually feeling into them you start to open up other parts of your nervous system which have been lying dormant they they exist there as potentialities but 
as we're exploring into these things and we're trying to get into that understanding Jin part, we have to move beyond the mere thinking process and into knowing without thinking to be able to expand into a super conscious state. And that requires stopping, slowing everything down and really being observant of what's going on inside your neshi, which is that internal looking is the, is the key there. And that's what opens up the understanding jinn and moving into spiritual illumination. So we get getting that understanding and actually the, the capacity to feel the substantial and insubstantial, the connections that are exist within the body and how that relates to the connections with the environment so that we feel the energy. Then we're starting to play a bigger game. We're starting to get out of just something that we're going through, uh, you know, a choreograph routine and into something where we have to really feel into it and and then the new possibilities that that exist that are in, inherent within that understanding start to present themselves to us they come you know we can look for them but they also come unbidden too they we like you know you'll wake up and like there it'll be there or you'll start to do your form and like oh this is new and it that you're constantly in a you have the potential of being surprised by something that you've done thousands of times. And that to me is the fun part. So we constantly have this opportunity of discovering something really cool in something that is quite familiar. <laughs>